I definitely suggest a call answering service. There are a number of them out there, but basically they answer the phones for us 24 hours a day, and then they either forward the calls to us, you know, try to connect live with one of our acquisition managers, mm -hmm. or they will take a message and basically do some some minor qualification of the, of the caller that, that came in because he could be anywhere, you know, at the grocery store. At Theoretically, he could be at the grocery store. <laughs> I'm just store. using that as an example. Disneyland, yes, that you could be there. Or on a river cruise or- okay, Anywhere, yeah. Exploring Vienna, anywhere. Yeah, okay. and the last thing you wanna do is answer the phone. Welcome to the Turning Profit Podcast, Heather. It's so great to be here once again. Yeah. So what are we talking about? I have actually no idea what we're talking about. Okay. Well, you know, you don't, it's on a need to know basis, but I'm sure the audience needs to know. That is land investing tools and services for starting and running a land investing business. Kind of like a tongue twister there. Yeah. That's probably not going to be the actual title, but it's kind of the working title I came up with. I mean, essentially we are discussing kind of the tools and things that you need to do in order to run a land investing business. We get asked about these things all the time. So these are kind of the tools that we use. I know that a lot of times there's other options, but we've tried them all and uh, feel very comfortable with the tools and services that we're using right now. Uh, speaking of which, if anyone has any ideas for an, an episode that you want us to talk about. Yeah, that's great. Are you saying this is not a great episode idea? No, I oh, like this. Okay. I think because okay. it, it is true. It's, I think this came about because we listen to what people want to know. Yes, that's questions. right. So Lots that's of questions, questions we get about this all the time. So they can message you on Instagram if they have ideas, right? Sure, sure. That's great. Uh, it's at partner with Pete. Mm -hmm. So You'll see me over there and I post all kinds of little clips and things on there. Also, um, a great way to, to get in contact with me is through our community, which is Land Conquest. So it's on the school platform. So you can find it by going to landconquest.com or school.com slash landconquest. So there's a message feature on there. You can you can message me on there. I get a lot of messages, so it may take me a little while to respond. But if you've got a great idea for an episode, either post it in the community or you can message me as well. Right. I was thinking of not sharing that because I know you're behind on that one. But. I am behind and I apologize if anyone's waiting for a response from me. But only so much time in the day, I guess you could but say. But we're working on new systems to keep up with that because it's right. important. And you love being a part of that community. Oh, yes. Like that's that's why you say that is because you enjoy spending time there. And there's a lot of good information that's shared. Uh, there's also our free training program is there. Yes, it's what all in the community. Yeah, you can just um, you can find it once you're a member of the community. You can find it by looking at the classroom tab of mm -hmm. the community. So it's actually an entire full training program that you may pay thousands of dollars elsewhere uh, to learn this type of uh, information, but I'm giving it away for free. It's the whole program too. It's not like you have to like it, you know. Right, at it's the not moment. Like you get a right, at the moment. That's, yeah, true. Because if you're listening to this later, it might not be. But it's not like you get a teaser and then you have to give us like your firstborn child and your social security number and, <laughs> yes. you know. We don't want your kids. <laughs> we don't want your kids. Well, that's nice. They've got dogs. our hands full of their own. What about their dogs? Would you take their the dogs? Dogs, possibly, yes. I'm yes. looking for a cat, so. Okay. Just kidding. I don't need another cat. But, yeah, um, you don't. I know. We but what don't. else can we find in the community? You can find all kinds of stuff. We do regular Zoom calls in there where we're evaluating deals. I've got an archive of all of our previous land um, investing income reports. So those are in there as well. So uh, yeah, all kinds of cool stuff in there. Okay, well, let's get started on today's episode. Let's do it. Let's do it, Heather. So, okay, so when we're talking about starting a land investing business, uh, there are a number of considerations you have to make from the beginning. One of them is um, setting up your business itself. So there's a number of things that kind of come into play there when you're setting up your business. One of the places to start would be obviously your domain name and once you get that, uh, then it's moving into some some basic tools for your business, meaning email management, online cloud storage, that type of thing. And we use Google Workspace for that. Uh, Google Workspace is uh, kind of uh, the industry standard. I know Microsoft has their own suite of tools for that, but I've always really loved the Google prod products much better. Maybe you're a Microsoft person and maybe that's, that's the way you want to go. But uh, we use it for email. We use it for their Google Drive. And we also use some phone lines through there as well. They have a, a Google Voice for, for workspace. It's not the cheap Google Voice line that's for free. It's an actual phone line that's tied to your email address and everything like that. And it's great if you have a team that you're building as well, because you can then establish different email addresses for your team or different inboxes, depending on you know who is uh, in, you know what function that that email you know inbox is for. Like we've got a. We've got an inbox for offers, you know, like any of the things that we send out on our mail. 
I've got my own personal inbox. We've got inboxes for the marketing team, the value add team, the transaction team, all kinds of things like that. So you can kind of set it up and give delegate access to different team members to based off of what they're doing. So it's a it's a very um, clean system, I guess you could say. So instead of sharing passwords with everyone. Right. It integrates well mm -hmm. along with calendars and calendars. Uh, you know, I should have mentioned that calendar is a very important thing as well that we use. <laughs> right. Yeah. Google calendar. Yeah. Right. And you can share calendars amongst people. Like, I mean, I think that's the way to go. But yeah, if you're if you're a Microsoft person, I don't know. It's been so many years since we've used. Yeah. That I, I don't even remember. much. Yeah. Of it, well, so. and, and then we also use stuff like Google Sheets, Google Docs. Mm -hmm. That's all Google part Drive of the Google, or... Google Workspace. And which, what's kind of cool is once you have your domain name, then it's based off of that that domain. You know, like you have your email mm -hmm. that's uh, it's, you use Gmail to manage it, but it's based off of your domain. Right. So. Yeah. So it's like, you know, whatever at realvest.com. Yeah. So it's not like there's no Gmail in there, but right. you do log in through Gmail, which I think confuses people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I, I mean, I guess we should point that out too. I think it's really important. I see this all the time. Someone will be using a Gmail account mm -hmm. and it'll be like their company, like it'd be realvest at gmail.com or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I see how that's easy to do. But as somebody who looks at the email addresses, I'm always like, eh. Yeah. And, and especially if you're, you know, trying to run this professionally, mm -hmm. right. you know, positioning yourself as a professional company to landowners or something like mm -hmm. that. Uh, it's, it's one hurdle that you probably uh, don't want to put in your own way. Right. So. It's just like a really simple step. Maybe some people won't notice at all and it won't really matter, but it, it will to enough people. They'll be like, oh, this could be a scammer. Yeah. Maybe, maybe you still want to use your AOL address. I, I was just going to say like, like your mom. I was just going to like to make fun of my mom. I don't think she does anymore. I think she's moved on to Gmail. Oh, she did. Okay. But I think she might still have it. Uh -huh. That's always funny. You see an email or an AOL one. You're like, man, yeah, that was, I had the worst. You did. You had the AOL. worst email. <laughs> I did. A yeah, AOL one. Because I was like, I let them do it. Because like, uh -huh. my name was Heather Delaney at the time. So I just let them choose that. And it was like, the problem was that they mixed L's with ones. Uh -huh. Yes, there was there was L's and ones next to each right. other. And like yeah. six of them. Right, yeah. It was the, the worst. I'm impressed that you remember that. That's from like 20, Yes, 30, I, I remember what it is, actually. So H-D-E-L. And then... Uh, there's six L's or something like that, or six ones. Or something, yeah, some variation of that at AOL.com. That's Horrible. hilarious. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. Good thing that, that you know those days are what my first email remember? address was? No, do you remember? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Pete Reese at rocketmail.com. Yes, yes, I do remember. That's funny that I could remember your brother's I don't brother's know what happened to Rocketmail. Maybe, maybe I'm still getting emails there. I think I AOL know. absorbed them. I don't know. I Yahoo, don't know. maybe, or something. Yeah, maybe Yahoo. I still have a Yahoo email for <laughs> really going to, yeah, I'm not going to tell you that one, though. Okay. Um, anyways, okay, so, yeah, that's, I mean, I think that just that just proved, like, how it, it looks professional or not professional mm -hmm. just by this conversation. So get a, get a custom email. Cut off on email. a tangent there. Um, mm -hmm. Anyhow, okay. Okay, so next, talking about a website. So you're going to need a website if you're going to have a land investing business, especially if you're positioning yourself towards property owners that are going to want to check you out online. A uh, number of different kind of options for that. We've got kind of a, a solution that we use and some of our students use, which I think is a very easy solution. And then there's also kind of the harder solution. The easy solution is using our Land Conquest business system. Now, our Land Conquest business system is kind of a whole suite of services and tools kind of combined under one platform. It's all the stuff that we use uh, to help run our business, but uh, we also offer that to our students as well if they're interested. So one of the uh, big components is a website that we include. We have a bunch of templates that we have on there. And um, basically, if you give us your logo and kind of your you name your company and everything, we can and tell us which template you like, we can get your website set up kind of right away. So very, very easy process without you having to do all the stuff. We have all the frequently asked questions and all the text in there and videos for frequently asked questions, everything you're going to kind of need to get up and going fast. If you're looking for kind of like a custom option for a website, you can always go, you know, we suggest doing like a self-hosted WordPress website and you can pay a designer to create that for you. And obviously you can, there, there's no limits to the creativity. You can make it as custom as you want. A lot of people don't have those skills to create those types of things on their own, so they have to hire some sort of outside developer to help them out with that, or designer and developer to, to create mm -hmm. that. So you can do that on, find someone to do that on Upwork or Fiverr or something like that. Yeah, and I think a lot of people just want to focus on making the money, not doing that. Well, that's that's why you we know, include it with the yeah. Land Conquest business system, because you know it's, it's not about the website, it's about the other stuff. Right. <laughs> so. I don't even know how many websites I've built, or how many times I've changed all this kind of stuff, and even at this point, I'm like, I just want someone 
wants to do it for me. Yeah, yeah. It's like, I don't know. It's just one of those things that's like, I, I don't really want to deal with it. I don't know. And I have to be in the right mood. So I, I think a lot of people will find that extremely valuable. And I, the whole land con- conquest business system, I swear that you put in there as a tongue twister too. Yeah, land yeah. conquest business system. That... When we were designing that, like your main goal was to make sure that it was kind of an all in one solution for all the different things so that right. they could focus on. Because the most important thing you're going to do is send offers mm-hmm. and, yeah. and work the deals and then get them listed. Though, Like if you're just that is where you're going to have the best bang for your buck. I say that every single time and I hate saying that one. But okay, well, that's where your focus should be. You know, not sh- it shouldn't be on these little things. But before we get going, where can they even find more information? About oh, uh, in order to get all the information about that, just mm-hmm. go to software.landconquest.com. Okay. Again, that's software.landconquest.com. And I ask you that because I can't remember where it okay. is. Okay. Next thing you're going to need if you are a running a land investing business is um, kind of a call answering service. Now, obviously, you can just let calls go to voicemail or you can answer them yourself. I don't suggest that. I think that's a tough way to run your business. But anyhow, so I definitely suggest a call answering service. The one we use currently is called Pat Live. There are a number of them out there. But basically, they answer the phones for us 24 hours a day, and then they either forward the calls to us, you know, try to connect live with one of our acquisition managers, mm-hmm. or they will take a message and basically do some some minor qualification of the of the caller that, that came in. So we've got that. Uh, the other option, which is coming soon, is in our Land Conquest business system, we'll be using AI voice call answering. So I'm very excited about that. We've been doing some testing on that, trying to get it dialed in before we can kind of release it to everyone. But that's going to be available in the uh, Land Conquest business system soon. And will that be an extra cost or will that be as part yeah, of Yeah, there'll be a little extra cost, mm-hmm. but it'll be way cheaper than than Pat Live. Mm-hmm. So it'll be, you know, you, you'll get a certain credit, you know, for the, for the kind of base package and then get charged per minute. But it, it'd be a lot cheaper than, you know, the live mm-hmm. call answering service. Did we ever start with just you doing it all? Or did um, you no, go No, straight- from the beginning, I had a call answering service. Right, because mm-hmm. that was like kind of a deal breaker. I was like, I don't want you sitting by your phone 24 hours a day waiting for calls. And people don't realize that people do call at weird hours. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like they might be like, it's 10 p.m. Like, ah, uh, we, we've know. had other businesses where I'm responsible for answering the phones mm-hmm. and everything. And I didn't want to go back to that because you could be anywhere, you know, at the grocery store, at Disneyland or whatever. Wait, the you see a call store, coming in. How many times are you at the grocery store? Oh, I'm never at the grocery store. Okay. But Theoretically, he could be at the grocery <laughs> I'm just store. Just using it as an example. Disneyland. Yes, that you could be there. Right. Right. Or on a river cruise or. Okay. Anywhere. Yeah. Exploring Vienna. Anywhere. Yeah, okay. and the last thing you want to do is answer the phone. So I think it's important that you start, if you can, start right off the bat with someone else doing your, your uh, answering the calls because you're going to get the level of people that are going to be pissed off. And then you're going to get people who are not really serious. These won't ask questions, which is fine. But this kind of like sets that, what's it called? The break between you and them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's another kind of cog in the uh, in the system here. Also, wait, did you say cog in cog. the system? Yeah, is that is that not a That's a bit... hilarious. I don't think I've ever heard that okay. one before. Yeah. Well, I got all kinds of new material, Heather. Next, we're going to go into phone lines. There's a couple different things kind of going on with the phone lines. You've got first of all, um, like we talked about, you can use Google Voice uh, as kind of a solution to to make some phone calls and connect with people and things like that. The Land Conquest business system also comes with five different phone lines. You've got five phone numbers that you can use on your marketing and everything like that. Those phone calls come into the system, the calls get recorded, everything like that, so you can reference them. Uh, Those are great kind of for the marketing side. You can also then call out to those people that that called in through the system and and all that kind of stuff, which which is neat. Sometimes you want to call people kind of outside of the CRM portion of the of the system that could be calling a real estate agent or calling someone to get bids for brush clearing or you know any mm-hmm. of those types of things that are kind of outside of a lead or something that you're working uh, you know we, we generally use Google Voice for that but anyhow so you've got a couple different uh, options there those are the ones that we use so next thing you want to consider is a business entity wait okay. I didn't add my comments yet don't okay, use your ahead. home phone number don't use your cell phone number like, I know it sounds like we should, like you're, to you, that's a no, like that's not even a question, but I mean, we've all done that, especially uh-huh. starting a business. You think, right. oh, I'll just use my cell phone number. Don't use your cell phone uh-huh. number. Do people have home phone numbers these days, Heather? I had a call yesterday from somebody and they're like, did I reach you on your home number or your cell phone? I was like, my cell phone. They're like, um, now, do you have a home phone number? I was like, no. Like <laughs> they were asking how many, how many cell phone lines are in your residence? And I'm like. <laughs> cell phone lines. Yeah. I don't know. I can call my watch. I can. You know, sometimes I have an answer on my watch. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just thought it was funny. So yeah, don't I mean, I I say that just in case you have a home, like maybe there's places that there are. Yeah, we we actually have a lot of sellers that we talk to that still have landlines. Mm -hmm. So we try to text them and it doesn't work. (laughs) (laughs) It's like this is not Yeah, this isn't happening. So it's something to remember. Now you can keep going. Okay, yeah. Well, business entity is kind of the next thing. Now business entity, you know, that's kind of a we're not lawyers and we're not um, no any sort of professionals on this. So this is just how we do it and, and what we have done for ourselves. Yeah, a lot of investors use either an LLC or uh, S-Corp, something like that. So in order to get a an entity going, you probably want to use a service or an attorney, I guess you could use. But if you're looking to kind of minimize your costs, a lot of people mm-hmm. use services, the ones that we recommend and have used ourselves, Northwest Registered Agents and also Inc. File. Now, those are kind of fill-in-the-blank type things. They They give you kind of a template, mm-hmm. templated uh, I type way to- I think Ink File is now called Biz- Biz- B? Biz- B? Yeah, okay, yes. But anyhow, uh, to, to actually, uh, we've we've got kind of special promotions with a lot of these mm-hmm. vendors and tools that we're mentioning. If you're interested in, in getting those uh, special promotions, just go to resources.landconquest.com. Say it one more time. Resources.landconquest.com. So we've got all the links to all of our stuff. Okay, so they don't have to so, be taking notes right no, now. No, no, no. And you don't have to like pause so, and screenshot like I do on yeah. on podcasts or videos. <laughs> yeah, so okay. just remember that and then you'll have the access to all this stuff. Okay, so next, uh, bank account. Bank account is pretty important because you're going to want to have a lot of people just sending you money. Right, and so. it's the, um, what do I call myself, the... Um, <laughs> chief financial officer. That's interesting, but I feel like I'm more like the chief... Uh, I'm sorry, the financial um, minion, if you will, oh, financial who, has minion. To, who has to send wires and all that kind of stuff. I cannot tell you how important it is that whatever bank you're going with that has the ability to send wires online, mm-hmm. like from your computer, from anywhere. And that it's a, you have to. Yeah, because it is such a pain in the what, Heather? You know what? To have to yeah. go into a branch, especially if you're traveling or whatever. Um, we've had a couple of times where I've had to this past year where there's been intermediary banks. Oh, yeah. Title companies that this, I haven't seen this since like I worked in banking 20 something years ago where they use the intermediary banks. So if you have like a small like hometown bank that does, isn't set up to, to transact wires in that way, they'll use like a big local or a nearby big bank. You'll send the wire there and then they will send it to the smaller bank. So that's the only time. So look for, you know, any of those of the big banks. I know if you did a Google search and you'd like looked at B of A, Chase, Wells Fargo, any of those, they're, people are going to complain about every single one of them. They will. They have problems with it. People hate big banks, whatever. But um, just whatever is closest to you, because you will have to go in and open it, theoretically. Yeah. Make sure the technology is good, like their app, everything, mm-hmm. so you can Citibank, do it all I guess. Online. Did I say Citibank? They, no, you didn't. But you Citibank, know. any of those. I mean, definitely. Just make sure the app is good. If you have like a connection, even better. You know, someone who kind of knows you, you can look for sign-up bonuses. But I think that's the most important thing. And then maybe get some of their credit cards too. Is that on here already somewhere? No. no? Maybe no. get some of their credit cards and you could earn extra points based off of how some of these other products code mm-hmm. on some free vacations. There you go. Free vacations. That's pretty cool. <laughs> I, know, I, was like, so, I know banking's the most boring thing ever. Sorry. I, I yeah, can't even I Free re- vacations is not, not uh, right. Unexciting. I keep saying I'm going to add the sign up bonus stuff to the resources page, but I haven't yet. But okay. maybe I will. Well, maybe you should, Heather. Maybe today will be the day. Probably okay. not, but we'll maybe, see. Maybe today. So the next thing that you have on there is, this is what I keep harping on, like all this other stuff that you could do yourself. I mean, you can't do your banking, but like, you know, call answering services, get one, get a mm-hmm. call answering service so you can focus on generating leads. Yeah. Generating leads and putting together deals. So mm-hmm. we generate most of our deals with direct mail. So for direct mail, there's kind of a, a number of components to that in order to make it all work. First of all, you need some solution for your data. This is where you can pull your list and you can look up properties in a particular county and compile your list of people that you're actually going to mail. We use a couple different services for this. PropStream is a really good option. They've got a special deal on that resources page. They uh, actually help with the data part of this. The right? data. Okay. This is the data. You know, this is building your list and kind of determining who, who you're going to mail. So uh, next would be uh, Data Tree. Uh, data Tree, we've uh, used them for a while. 
they're a good solution as well. Are they also just doing the information yeah, the gathering? Okay. Yeah, exactly. And you can also look up um, sometimes documents, online documents and things like that uh, if they're in their database. Sometimes looking up deeds or something like that, they've got and allow you to do that. Data tree like a service of like a title company? First of? American. First American. Yeah, so they're using American. that. Yeah, so they, they've compiled all this data from, from all these counties all over the United States. So they, they've got a really um, extensive data source there. Uh, and then also Property Raider. Property Raider is another one that's similar to PropStream. Uh, we first started with, with Property Radar, um, our first number of mailings and everything. And um, so we did move on from them, but they actually are pretty good. Uh, I know some, some land investors use a service called Land Vision. It's Sounds fancy. Yeah, I haven't used it myself, but it's very pricey. You know, it's like sounds, many thousands. Sounds elitist. <laughs> many thousands per year. Um, many, many thousands per year. So, but it's kind of an un unlimited thing, I think. Mm -hmm. So you can pull as much data as you want. So if you're doing high volumes, maybe that's a, maybe that's a good solution for you. The big thing is that you need to find the one that works for you. Right. And sometimes even just their formatting is different. Maybe um, Land Vision is very, um, like very aesthetically easy to... I don't know, mm -hmm. but I've noticed a lot of those, I guess it's just identifying how your brain works. Like some people like more of a, like a, almost like a spreadsheet data kind of, I don't know we call that, like a more simplest way of doing it. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, maybe you like to pull some of your own information, but do we have links to all those that we have? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep, exactly. Okay. Next, you're going to need uh, a mailing service that's actually going to send out your mail for you because... Unless you've got someone like Heather in your household that was willing to stuff all these envelopes oh, for yeah. you and put on the stamps and all that kind of stuff, then you probably don't want to be doing that yourself. Uh, so you probably want to hire a service that will do all that for you and make it very easy. Pizza choker. Like that's I, mean, I get Heather paper would cuts. I would, that, no, so. that would be the worst thing ever. Um, not the worst thing ever. Jeez, that was dramatic. Yes, that's um, dramatic. Yeah, but the thing is that even if I, I know a lot of people actually do think I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. Right. Things come up. Stuff happens. You can't do it. Whatever the thing is. But the reality is that if you have a service that's doing it, they're going to be pushing you. Okay, we've got it ready to go. Let's send it out. Yep. And we talk about this all the time. You have to stay on a schedule. You have to get it done. And so as much of these things that you can take off of your plate, the more even everything's going to work. Like the more your consistency is going to be there. Yeah, exactly. All right. So the mailing service. Next, um, these tools are Wait, free. you didn't even talk about. What? You didn't even talk about. Oh, who we, who we use. Yes. Yes. The, we use Rocket Print and Mail. Mm -hmm. They've been great. They're kind of the best pricing that I can find around. They're very reliable and uh, they've just done a great job to us, uh, job for us. So we've got some special deals if you look in that resource page uh, for Rocket Print and Mail. And even if they didn't give special deals, um, I would definitely be using them. They, they do a great job. Next thing, which would be a tool for this business that actually does not cost anything. These are free resources? Free resources, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, first of all, these would be kind of marketing research tools uh, and also researching the properties You know, when they come in, values and everything. It would be Zillow, mm -hmm. Redfin, and Landwatch. So those are kind of important tools for us to kind of look how a particular market is before we actually mail those areas. This is how you're doing kind of your, your I don't wanna say common research, but that overview look. Yep. Like you're gonna see, you know, what different um, things are selling for, yeah. what's available nearby, just all that, like the deeper, I love how Zillow actually, I think people discount that, but it does give a lot of information on there. If you read through it, last oh, yeah. sales. I, I use Zillow continuously. You know, like what's what's listed, what's mm -hmm. recently sold. You know, it's it's very kind of uh, important to what mm -hmm. we do to have use services like that. Right. I wouldn't go by their pricing though. You know, they have that. I mean, I, it's some sort of yeah. Idea, well, you just have to you just have to know what you're looking for. You have to be looking at oh, you. I, you I mean, mean they're the automated like, pricing. Yeah, the yeah, automated yeah. one. Don't, don't do that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next thing, uh, property evaluations. When a, when a lead actually comes in, mm -hmm. it's important to know uh, what that property is like, so you can. Uh, evaluate and determine if you want to buy that property or what it's what it's worth. So Land ID mm -hmm. is the tool that we use every day. It's a big part of what we do. Land ID used to be called MapRite. It's a it's a tool where you can look up a property on the map and you can see everything about it. Well, not everything. You can see ninety percent of what that property is about. You can see satellite images, lots of different overlays with lot lines and road frontage and all this kind of stuff. So it's all in Land ID and be nearly impossible to do this business without land ID, mm -hmm. I feel. The next very similar kind of free resource, mm -hmm. uh, if you're not going to invest in land ID, would be county GIS websites. So basically, 
almost every county in the United States has their own website where you can look up, you can see property lines, you can see some information about the land, all that kind of stuff, the tax records. So those are called the county GIS website. So to find that for a particular county, all you gotta do is type in like San Diego County space GIS, and then it'll pull up. I didn't so, know that. There you go. So awesome. It stands for like geographical information system, I think is what it stands for. You know, with the magic of editing, Heather, our viewers and listeners won't know, but we actually had to take a quick break to watch the eclipse. Solar eclipse. Well, yeah. this, they say in our area, only 54% of the sun is obstructed by the moon. It was that much? Yeah. Oh, wow. I thought it would be way less than that's, that. That's what they say. It did look a little... It had like a weird gray, dark. Eerie. It yeah. was eerie. Yeah. A I get it. Eerie. Did you know they said something like, um, I can't remember what it was, but it was like a substantial amount of people will cry when it happens if it's a full eclipse. Really? Like Why? they just cry. Hmm. Maybe it's just because it's one of well, those. Well, I was getting teary because I was staring right at it for like I know. I was a like, minute or look two. at it. Just, just look at it. I was no, like. I wasn't doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to make it. I did it. take a selfie though with it. So. Yeah, I was like, well, I guess if you burn through the iPhone, it's okay. We'll get a new one. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. So that was fun. So yeah, I hope you guys fun. got to see it, too. I hope actually that you're watching this or listening to this from an area where it's actually like, I mean, that would be crazy. To yeah. See. If you could see the full clips. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. OK. We talked about property evaluation, land ID, county GIS, everything like that. Next thing you need to consider is that once you send out your mail and everything, you have to manage those leads that are coming in. So we obviously use our land conquest business system for that. There's a really robust CRM portion of that where you can manage all your incoming leads. There's a lot of automations that, uh, you know, communication with the property owners or the sellers that come in and try to uh, make that process of turning a lead into a deal much easier. Mm -hmm. So it, it can be done with, you know, say just a Google sheet or something like that. In fact, that's the way we first started, mm -hmm. you know, using a Google sheet to kind of manage leads, but it gets really out of hand really quickly. And it's hard to stay on top of things. Like uh, how do you, how are you supposed to know you're supposed to contact this person three days from now or whatever? It's just on a Google sheet. It's just, just very difficult. To right. Do. Just because it can be done, it doesn't mean it should be done. And <laughs> the best way to do so the, the best thing is to set yourself up from the beginning instead of saying, Oh, I wonder how it'll go. No, set yourself up for success right from the beginning. Something that can really manage everything. And it should be staying on top of you. You shouldn't have to be staying on top of it. Exactly. That's a great way to put it, Heather. Thank you. Uh, yeah. So an, another uh, thing that's kind of important in the process if you're trying to turn a lead into a deal is some sort of electronic signing app. So there's a couple <laughs> of them that we use, uh, SignWell and also DocuSign. Can you imagine not having that now? It would be tough. It would be tough. Now, we send out letters in the mail and sometimes mm -hmm. people just sign those letters and send them back. You know, so you could then print it and sign it yourself and then scan it back or whatever. But it's easiest to just put that in an electronic signing app. So you just sign it through your email so you don't have to print it and scan it and all that kind of stuff. Plus, a lot of times you may renegotiate the price and it's just easiest to send someone an email so they can sign it that way instead of, you know, having them print it and scan it and all this kind of stuff, which right. is which is going to put a lot of roadblocks into uh, between you getting that deal. Right, so. and the Signwell's pretty affordable, right? Yeah, Signwell's really cheap. It's like $10 a month or something for their basic package. Mm -hmm. DocuSign is more expensive. We use them forever for, um, you know, as a real estate agent and everything for probably at least 10 years, something like that. Mm -hmm. So, But they're, they're pretty expensive, so I don't know if I'd recommend them. <laughs> so Right, Signwell seems to work. I mean, it's yeah. kind of like what's the in industry standard is yeah. DocuSign maybe, but that doesn't mean that there's not a place for that. And if we were starting all over again, I would go with Signwell. Yeah, oh, you know what? So, so many of these, there's so many of these signing apps mm -hmm. out there that you know, there's less of an industry standard now. Right. So right. many different ones, you know. Well, so. we were around when fax machines and... <laughs> Like Heather, don't talk about that. <laughs> we actually still have a fax number. I didn't put that on the list, but do we really? rarely, you know, probably about once a year, we get someone that's like, hey, can we fax that mm -hmm. to we you? We can only fax. We, we only, only fax. fax. Yeah. Yeah. So we do still have one. Probably costs us 10 bucks a month for a fax number, but at some point we'll get rid of it, I'm sure. I wonder if um, Google is going to have the ability to receive. Yeah. Maybe uh -huh. in Google Voice, maybe you can receive faxes. I don't even know. Maybe yeah, you can. I'm not sure. I should look into that. We're probably paying for something we don't need. One thing I didn't mention as well is a mail processing service. So this is different from a mailing service that sends out your mail. This is a 
kind of like a virtual mailbox, I guess mm -hmm. you could call it. So it's a business location that you can use on all your kind of course, your website and your, your outbound mail and all that kind of stuff. But what's cool about it is that they receive mail on your behalf. All the mail that comes in, they actually scan it and then send you an email, you know, letting you know either that they that you received something and check their dashboard, or they can actually send you a copy of the mail as well, some of the services. So pretty invaluable. You don't want to give out your home address again, you know, to, to receive mail and, and all this stuff. So it's much better to use a mail processing service. Some of the ones that, that we use and recommend, Anytime Mailbox, uh, Virtual Post Mail, and then also physicaladdress.com, depending on what state you're trying to do or any of these type of things. So I just want to look for the different locations and stuff. I love it because the ones that automatically send you a PDF or you request it, it's in my email now. So I'm not, it, it helps with not having to, like, I can look that back up yeah, years to come. Nice. Like yeah. just for me, that alone is worth it. Like, okay, just go through that and search for it. I, I think that alone, I hate opening mail. If we're traveling, I don't have to worry about missing a piece of mail. I know. It's great. I don't know how you do it, this business without it. Actually. No, I wish I had thought of doing that or been okay. I don't know. I thought there was some sort of roadblock. Like I was like, I don't want to do that. It's private stuff. They'll be looking at it, whatever. It's not the case. I'm not mm -hmm. worried about it now. I wish we had done it before for other businesses. Just mm -hmm. having that as your business mail. I know. Like, I know. It doesn't make sense not to have it. So, and then to be able to use it for this is just, it's really, really good. Yeah. And then, yeah, I mean, I guess you could have a P.O. box or something like that, but then you've got to go down to the P.O. box every single day and check it out. Or if you're not going every day, then people, it's a mm -hmm. delay for when you're getting back to people and stuff. So it doesn't make a lot of sense. No. To me. Oh, and I should say too, that they also will forward you. So say you do get like a check. Mm, yes. Actually, a lot of them do where they'll deposit it for you. Oh yeah. You can, yeah. You can I don't use that service, yeah. but they'll actually like deposit checks for you, but we just have them forward stuff if we need it. Like mm -hmm. say we get a box or something, we just have them forward it to us. We pay for the shipping, which is, by the way, super reasonable, too. I don't feel like they're even yeah, upcharging if they are. I so. yeah. don't think so. Okay, what's next? Yeah, okay, so next thing you're going to need to consider is mm -hmm. process management. Now, what do you mean by that? Well, uh, there are a lot of different processes, different processes that happen within this business. Uh, you've got acquisition, you know, mm -hmm. you've got a whole process in place for turning a lead into an actual deal. Mm -hmm. So that's the acquisition process. We've got a due diligence process, one that is uh, kind of keeps track of the whole system you go through in order to research these properties when you get them under contract. We've also got a transaction acquisition process, meaning it's the communication with all different parties to actually get that transaction closed with mm -hmm. the, the closing company, the title company, the seller. And then a marketing process, you know, then we put these properties on the market and manage price reductions and things like that with the real estate agent. That's a marketing process. We've got a value add process. That's if we are going to get any work done to a property, brush clearing, survey, any of that type of stuff, anything where we need bids that all gets managed through our value add process. And then also the transaction on the resale side, when we get a property under contract again, managing that process with the closing company, the real estate agents and all, all the parties involved there. So all those different processes, it's best to have a software platform to, to actually manage those things, keep, keep them organized. And we've built out all those processes within the Land Conquest business system. So you don't have to reinvent the wheel there. Mm -hmm. uh, these are all processes tailored to this land investing business that we do. And that and we use. That we use specifically. Yeah. So these are all, all the processes that we've mapped out, all the automations that go along with that. Uh, it's all included with the land conquest business system. Right. And if we um, improve an area, it can be improved in your system too. Like you can benefit from our changing and stuff like that. Yep, exactly. Right. So I, I, I think like, it's, oh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's, it's obviously possible to keep some track of some of this mm -hmm. stuff kind of haphazardly without a, a defined system like that. And maybe there are other softwares out there that you could kind of customize to, to do that for you. But uh, again, why reinvent the wheel? Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I think the land con conquest business system is, is ideal for that. And, you know, maybe if you're just doing one deal here and there, it's not not as vital. But if you start getting into multiple properties at a time, things like that starts getting out of hand really quickly if you are not super organized with that stuff. Right. But people always want to know, like, how are you doing it? What are you doing? How are you doing it? Okay. And really we're giving you everything like it's out there. Like our the free training program tells you 
exactly every step that we use. And then you can add on the Land Conquest business system, and that's going to have all the systems in place. So pretty much it's just a replication of what we're doing. It's our whole business mm-hmm. in a box, pretty it much. It just doesn't so. come with us. It doesn't come with us, yes. Well, I would Sorry. be useless, but you would be of benefit to other people. <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't have much time in the day uh, to <laughs> to be of any use, I think, in, in a lot of cases. But anyhow, so. You forgot something. after. Are you done? You wrap that up, and then you forgot one thing. Oh, okay. Well, that's that was wrapped up. What did um, I forget? You forgot. Um, the other thing is, wait, what is the title, working title of this again? Investing Tools and Services. You forgot Partner with Pete. Oh, Partner with Pete. Yes. Okay. So when you are... I mean, I, I guess this is a, a, a very vital service if you are going to be in this land investing business. If you don't have all your own funds to buy these properties, you'll want to work with a, a funder, uh, most likely, and a land funder that uh, is your partner on the mm-hmm. deal rather than just a, maybe a source of money. So the partner with Pete program. You that sound dirty. You're like, or maybe just a, not. I tried to, I tried to make it sound like partner with Pete is really great. That's why I said oh, that. Oh, okay, okay. But it is really great. Because the money people <laughs> Yeah. Partnerwithpete.com. And it's it's more than just money, mm-hmm. you know? Like, obviously, the big part of this program is that if you find a deal, you submit it to partnerwithpete.com. We actually look at the deal, and if we agree that it's a deal that fits within our parameters, we agree to fund the deal, meaning that we will use our money to buy the property. But we do more than that. We actually handle all the processes that go into a land investing transaction, and that's handled all by my team. We take the baton and we run with it after you get the deal secured. So that's stuff like any value add, like if we need to get a brush clearing done or a survey, anything like that, we'll front the cost for that. If there are, you know, uh, well, we do the whole due diligence process. We hire a photographer to go out there. We get the broker opinions. Mm-hmm. We do a report on the property. All these different things. We the use our network of agents too. Our network of agents, and yes. Title companies and escrow companies and all that kind of stuff. Exactly, and basically we do the whole process. We get the the property through the whole system, and when we resell the property, we split the profits 50-50. And that's so you can use all of our resources, and you can just worry about getting more deals. Get some deals. Get and more you deals. Get yeah. Half of the pro, you know. So. Yeah. yeah, we've had investors that we've worked with that have gotten well, the top one so far has been they got a wire transfer for a hundred eighty some thousand dollars right not, so not too they're shabby, just right? their share of the profits yeah so there's real potential money to be made here and we would love for you to check out the partner with pete program so i guess before we get into the next se- segment really quick heather mm-hmm. uh, i do want to mention what you don't need what you don't need to get that may be kind of a lot of people assume you need Business cards is the top of the list. It would be a rare situation where you're ever going to need to give out your business card. Unless you're doing this business only locally, you're going out to meet these you know, landowners in person, going out to meet real estate agents in person. Maybe you need business cards. Even that, I feel like you could just be like, let me text you my info. Or yeah, I mean, exactly. Here's but, my website. Theoretically... So. <laughs> So do we do you even have any business cards no. for this business? No, I no, I do, but uh, they're out of date now. So I just used them if I was gonna send something out in the mail to someone like mm-hmm. a follow up letter or something, but I don't I only used it a couple times. So mm-hmm. you know, even um letterhead was something like I was like, we have to do letterhead. Yeah. And we did, we got letterhead and then our mailing address actually changed. Yeah. And I was like, you know what, forget that. I just hired somebody to create the letterhead and then we just like print it. Yeah. So like it. you just, you know, like you don't need to have it. Like it doesn't matter if it's black. No one cares. No, it's, no one cares. You know? No one cares. What's the other thing? Real estate license. Mm-hmm. You know? I don't have one. No, Heather doesn't have one. I, did. I actually used, do have a broker yeah. license, but I don't need a license at all to doing what I do. More real estate calls or something? Yes, yes, more calls um, uh, on my I, watch. So I used to have one. Mm-hmm. I was just a real estate agent, though, not a broker. Didn't change my life significantly. And, but you have kept your broker's license <laughs> yes. just to help us buy. Yeah, locally. You know, yeah. if we find properties that we want to buy or whatever, I keep mm-hmm. keep track of things around here. And but. I always point that out, like these are because you want to disclose that too. Mm-hmm. I'm like, he's a broker and they're probably like. But you don't need a real estate license to do this business at all. I'm trying to think of like some of the most successful land investors like in our community and stuff. Do any of them? I mean, I don't know of any that have a real estate license at all. No. Yeah. Um, and I'm not even sure when, you know, like we talk about, oh, we have all this history of real estate and stuff. I, I don't know if anything that we learned like formally with the real estate license training stuff 
would have helped at all. I still cannot calculate how many feet are in a mile or whatever the... How many feet are in a mile? No, wait, what was the one, the question on the test? I was like... I was. How, how many square feet are in an acre? Probably. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You no, know still can't 43,560. See, I did have to memorize it for that test, but okay. I'm just saying, yeah, don't let that stop you. And don't put that like, if you're going to spend money on something, do it on mailing as opposed to a license. And how many feet are in a mile are 5,280? I'm so proud of you. That's the reason I married you. Okay. That wonderful memory of yours. Thank God for that. How many times has that saved you? Like, how much money have we made off of that skill? Of knowing how many square feet are in an acre? Mm-hmm. Lots. Okay. I suggest you learn that right away. Yeah. <laughs> I'm calling <laughs> yes I don't on know. That one. I like it. I, I don't know. I use it a lot. Do you? I, I do, kind of in my head. I'm proud so, of you. Yeah. Okay. When someone says, okay, this is a... This is a um, 20,000 square foot lot. I would know if just kind of oh. like, oh, that's like a half acre. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's I just good. Do rough conversions like that. We so. were um, on a walk yesterday and I was like something about eight. I was like, what? what's 800 feet from our house? And you were like, that's, I don't know. You said some other thing. And I, did you say something in metric or so? I was like, okay, that I don't know. That didn't help me at all. I'm like, I'm going to need you to point. So I was like, like, that's 250 meters or something. Yeah. And like I was that. like, yeah. no, something like that. Yeah. Anyway, I grew up in Southern California, though, so... Okay, well, I'm thinking about is running distance or something. Yeah, that's nope, okay. not helpful either. No, but, like, around here, we don't do... Like, if someone says, like, how far is something, and I'll be, like, an hour. They're like, but the distance, I'm like, I have no idea. It's, like, <laughs> yeah. an hour. I don't yeah, know. Depending, yeah. yeah, depending on the time, too. Because Time it's, and distance are all exactly. kind of, yeah, melded together here. I don't mm-hmm. know. And we also say the 405 as opposed to... 405 freeway? Yeah, but, like, I'll be, like, it's on the off the... You know, the five. The 405. The, 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 the mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Anyways, there we go. Are you ready for our next segment? Yeah, next segment. Are, these are questions that we've handpicked, cherry-picked from our community, the Land Conquest community. Pete has. I have, yes. And uh, each week on the podcast at the end, we highlight four different questions, and then we rapid-fire answer them. What have you got today for us, Heather? I like this question. This is from Spencer. He says, mailing the same area multiple times. He said... Hey folks, I've heard numerous times about mailing the same county area multiple times, and I'm wondering if you do that only if you've gotten some hits or leads out of the area. In other words, would you mail the same area again, even if you don't get any leads out of it? No, I would not. So that's a great question. Mm -hmm. You know, we've got our kind of favorite areas, and generally these favorite areas we mail every three months or so. Mm -hmm. Now we repeat mailing to them every three months or so. But if there are areas where I'm getting no traction and I'm not getting any leads or whatever, unless I've got some sort of real motivation to make it work, I'm probably not going to mail it again anytime soon. <laughs> You're like, this will be the time. Yeah, it's I know. Happen. I want to get some properties here or something like that. Like, I'm going to tweak my pricing and do something. But mm-hmm. generally, I'm not going to. If it just doesn't get traction there, it doesn't seem to get there any sort of response like I like, then I'm probably not going to remail it. In addition to that question, I'll ask my own. Why would you keep mailing the same place over and over again? Doesn't that seem like a waste of money? I guess in theory, it's a waste of money, but we, our results seem to get better and better the more that we mail an area. An area. Mm-hmm. I, just I think people nervous. recognize our company name and, you know, uh-huh. it just doesn't make me nervous. <laughs> you were like, it just seems to work better. Right. You know, I know people struggle to get a foothold in a certain area, but if we've already started doing some deals, we keep mailing that area. Um, we, continue to get deals in those areas. It kind of does make sense though, because sometimes people aren't motivated on the first mailer and then they see it the second time and they're kind of like, oh, maybe, you know, yeah, I should do that. And they set it aside. And then the third time they're like, yeah, yeah. okay. This yeah. is obviously a legit place because they keep emailing me. Mailing you. Mailing you, whatever. Yes. Contacting mean, me. Yes. <laughs> Heather's emailing me again. Yes. So yeah, that makes sense. But yeah, if you're not getting anything, don't waste, I mean- Unless you think that maybe you overpriced it, underpriced, whatever. Yeah, yeah, made some sort mm-hmm. of mistake. Maybe then that's another. Uh-huh. But yeah. like, but why? You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like, there's probably a reason. Okay, Robert says wholesaling land. Is anyone wholesaling land, or are most of you all buying then reselling? I have been wholesaling houses for a while and loving this land opportunity that I'm seeing. All the stuff that we do personally is uh, buying the land, like actually closing on the purchase and then reselling it. Now we're open to buying land from wholesalers. For sure. I haven't found wholesalers that really seem to get this business, understand the pricing where things need to be and everything to make sense. So I'll get a lot of people bringing me opportunities, but many times they're at retail pricing or maybe slightly below or something like that. 
So that's kind of the biggest obstacle. But I, I think that there's definitely money to be made as, as a wholesaler in this business. Um, but you got to know what you're doing. You got to really understand the, the values and everything. Sometimes in, in the partner with Pete program, uh, we'll get a submission and, and it may not be enough profit to, to partner on a deal. And in those types of cases, I may just offer and say, hey, you know, like there's not enough profit to like meet our minimums here. But if you are interested in assigning the deal, we could pay you an assignment fee. And that would basically be a wholesale of that deal. So we've done a number of those as well. Mm -hmm. Boston says negotiating tactics. What are some of the tactics or reasons you use when negotiating price with the seller? Specifically, when you get a call from a blind offer you, that you sent out, but then realize that the offer on the letter was too high and you need to lower the price to make the deal work. Yeah, in, in those situations, you know, first of all, I would have a, a situation, uh, I would have a conversation with the seller, try to get as much information as you can about the property and everything like that. And then obviously you're looking at some things that probably make the property less than average. I mean, you're typically pricing these mailers off of average pricing for county. And then the deal comes in, the lead comes in and it's a below average property. So likely you're going to have to, to renegotiate. So in those types of situations, it would be simply a matter of kind of uh, letting the seller know like why, you know, why you can't, you know, go ahead at that, at that price. And a lot of times it comes down to features on the property that are, are less desirable, you know? Oh, I didn't realize that, you know, 50% of the property is wetlands. And they oh, know these things. They know these things, yeah. yeah. So I didn't realize that that the access was so challenging. You know, I didn't realize that... It had you know, a whole acre it, of trash oh, it's, cans. It's, it's a lot yeah. of slope on this property, yeah. <laughs> had a thousand tires on the property. Yeah, you exactly, know? yeah. So whatever the case is, you you know, you want to point those things out without... It's, it's a little bit of a fine line. You don't want to insult people or whatever, but I, I wouldn't... I wouldn't um, I wouldn't do it in a way that's, I would be just talking specifically about the property itself. It's facts. Like, oh, it's facts. facts yes. Yeah. Like, yeah, there's, there's a lot of slope to this property, you know, I like it and everything like that, but you know, the slope does decrease the market value of the property. So, you know, so using those types of uh, strategies would be your best bet. Um, Jay says, question, I've been digging through different real estate programs and niches, even spent 8,000 on a specific real estate niche industry, but have to put on hold for now. But question I have for the group is, is wholesaling land and land flipping the same concepts? No, this kind of ties back to the other question. Mm -hmm. Basically, if you're wholesaling, you're not actually closing on the purchase of the property. You're mm -hmm. just getting a property under contract and you're signing that contract for a fee to an investor or someone that is actually going to close on the purchase. So you'll get, you'll get paid a fee, um, a spread basically at the closing of, of the purchase of that property. Now, land flipping, uh, generally our business model, what we do is we actually close on the property purchase and then we resell the property after that. So when we close on the purchase, we control the property, we own it. You know, there's you know, there's there's no involvement from the seller or anything at that point at all. So that's why we do it. it gives us more flexibility. We're allowed to improve that. We can improve the properties in a lot of cases. You know, by even simple things such as brush clearing or trash cleanup or getting a survey, splitting it up, something like that. So we can use all kinds of different tactics when we actually own the property rather than you know just just wholesaling it. So two different things. I guess that was it on the questions, right? Yeah. Yep. That was it. All right. So again, uh, just a little recap uh, to get um, links to any of these services that we talked about today. That would be at resources.landconquest.com. If you want to check out what the Land Conquest business system is about, just go to software.landconquest.com. And I guess that's about it, Heather. Um, nothing else I can think of. So big uh, thumbs up. <laughs> big thumbs up. Let you do the links for everything. Yeah, that's it. That was a great episode. I'm, I'm happy that we were able to get to all these. And if you think of other episodes you'd like us to talk about, uh, go ahead and message Pete on Instagram at partner with Pete or join the community. Yes. And you can message him over there. And I think that's it till next time. Till next time. We'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.